Alrighty, the wind's slamming. As you may be able to hear. Um, probably an ounce with that, uh, what I thought was a stack of hardwood flooring. I've got this little batch of shiitake going in there. There was one other packet hidden amongst a bunch of oyster mushrooms. One other packet of shiitake. At a reasonably far away, well, it's not the closest hardware store. Um, for some reason, they've got all the other ones there ready to go. And shiitake is listed at one, not listed at the other, but the one I was listed at only had two packets, one of which I got. Anyway, getting back to the point I was at with all those hardwood uh, flooring stack, or what I thought was a hardwood flooring stack. Um, going through it to try and get rid of some of the rotten bits of um, construction pile at the front, only to find out that it's actually mainly construction pine underneath there. And there's only probably well, nine inches worth of floorboards on the top. Quite interesting. You never know until you get into these things. A lot of these, it's obviously from a demolition um, of something else. This construction stuff, honestly, <laughs> I think it's mostly noggins. I'm looking at it all as bits that are one foot, bits that are two foot. There'd be nothing over about two and a half foot long in the whole lot, I'm not joking. Um, so, yeah. And surprisingly, it's perfectly dry. It's as good as the day that it was taken down, basically. Demolished. I was so surprised that it wasn't rotten as shit like all the other stuff. And it seems just the way the boards have been thrown on the top, the hardwood flooring, it's all just sort of <laughs> almost ran off from like shingles or something like that, where it's all just sort of one's overlapped onto the other, but it's never actually worked its way right through these floorboards, which is quite surprising. But of course, some of the floorboards have got a bloody good hammering in the process. And I have decided I won't do a second batch of shiitake yet. I'll do that next autumn. I want to see how this first batch goes. And this week is uh, sort of like the calm before the storm. <sighs> In the middle of next week, uh, things start heating up with this welfare office and all that. And, uh, Things are going to go to shit pretty quickly. They want me to work 15 hours a week. There is a casual place that I might be able to get about that amount. Dealing with meat chickens in an environment that is about as dusty as that fog I showed you the other day. It's just... Shit pay, shit conditions, bad dust bad ammonia, then the dumb bastards want you to wear a dust mask because of the dust, regardless of all the ammonia there. And I've tried to go in with my proper bloody respirator on and had one of the permanents there carry on like a little bitch. Oh, my well, dear, but it's not a proper dust filter. Yeah, fuck me, dude. If this isn't a proper dust filter, what the hell is? Like, honestly. Dumb cunt didn't know what he was talking about. And here he is, in all their safety bullshit trying to talk you into downgrading your safety equipment to their piece of crap where you're just breathing into a bloody paper bag, re-breathing all the same breath you've already breathed, which is exactly what those stupid-ass paper masks done. I don't have any faith in paper masks. I used them for years. And they're shit. They're crap. I used them during my apprenticeship and all that. They're, they're fucking rubbish. You might as well just... It's actually better for you, I reckon, to breathe through a bit of cotton drill because at least your breath bloody will get out and you don't just keep re-inhaling your same damn breath half the time. Nowadays, they have a little released piece at the front with a little thin bit of rubber inside that's supposed to... They're useless. They're no better than the old ones that I was using in 2001. You know, they still hold all in there. But anyway... 
in this last week in the car before the storm, I want to sort of enjoy that as opposed to go back to that hardware store, go like hell trying to find that second packet that was mixed in a bun amongst a bunch of oyster mushroom um, spore packets and I think I'll leave it for next autumn but my plan today the whole reason for playing around with these floorboards was to pick out the worst of them that were splintering up and starting to rot and put them to one side but elevate them off the ground with other bits of um, reasonable quality pine and rocks just for the purpose of keeping them off the ground to avoid them going mouldy this winter and then next autumn I'm going to inoculate those with shiitake most likely that's the plan um, but I don't think I'd be able to fence off another area, dig a hole put that in, you know, inoculate it with the shiitake spores and all that stuff in this last week and I'd rather have a bit more of a relaxing week as opposed to go like a bat out of hell to um, do that and I may, you know, we, I think we're almost a little bit too late in the season as it is um, because they sort of, you know, they need like six to eight weeks to inoculate properly and it's all right with the box I've got now because I can put it in my bedroom and I can put it in, you know, places like this you know, me glass in veranda where it's it's between the 16 to 25 degrees Celsius range perfectly in here all the time, you know. Um, but that might not quite be the case if I dig a trench outside and chuck it in the trench and then bury it over, which is the proper way you do it for wood as opposed to sawdust. Um, anyways, I also... A lot of you guys probably haven't seen it. Um, oh, if you've seen my video on all my wood stash, you would have. There's a whole stack of little offcuts. I mean, they're only like about six inches by six inches by about an inch and a half. Big bunch of them. That's also hardwood. And I got a decent sized plastic bag before, one that's. I don't know what exactly it came from. It looks like it's had some sort of a product in. It's about two thirds the size of a garbage bag anyway and I went and um, walked around the sides of that stack of offcuts and plucked out some of those that were going rotten and uh, you know just sort of starting to crumble up and the bugs have got into them and whatnot and put those in a bag to keep them actually in the front veranda with the top of the bag open um, so they remain dry, don't get wet, don't get waterlogged and don't start going mouldy as a result of some other fungi getting into them because I want to put in the shiitake fungi not see some other fungi go through and you know use them up or eat them out or well use them up and eat them out and be inoculated and um, have that spore as the majority spore and no chance of introducing shiitake in, in which case if I did there might not be any nutrients left because it's been grabbed by the other fungi. Um, so that's the idea there. There's also, you guys know where the cardboard house was, I had that stack of wood beside it. Um, yeah, where the water tank is out there. A lot of that water has had bugs get into it because that's sitting straight on the ground. It, uh, it had other bits of wood going sideways but they sort of sunk into the soil or something like that um, <laughs> they're literally below ground level so a lot of that stuff you know has been gotten into by uh, cockroaches and whatnot and uh, millipedes uh, hanging around it and all that and there's some in there that uh, that stuff there you guys might remember that giant bloody framework I made up that I was going to have a super dish, a super sized solar cooker and um, well essentially speaking between the transport from where it was built to here plus a good heap of winds plus the fact it was made from some of those same bits of wood that the bugs had got into and I didn't actually realise it 
in the dim fluorescent light um, after I had already painted it that it was all partially rotten. Some of the screws come loose in the force of the wind and the transportation over here jiggling it around and uh, it collapsed. Having said that, this is quite this will be quite surprising to you guys. Almost all the four by two, never mind some of the other bits, some of the other bits on top of that stack are used, but most of just about the entire lot of the four by two on that stack is unused timber. Was bought and I wouldn't be surprised if my uncle had it might have been at the other property, might have been at his friend's property, and he's bought it here um, and just sat it there. And it's never had a bloody nail put into it. Fantastic. So, with a lot of this timber, I'm going to try and split it up. <laughs> the damn weatherboard, uh, the floorboards, most of them are just falling to bits in your hand. Uh, some of the little off cuts there, they're easy to split up. It's only a little hatchet job and some of those have rotted pretty damn well and been attacked by bugs quite well. Um, some of those you can split up just by bending them by hand and they'll just, you know, because they've got a lot of cracks forming on them uh, with the length of the grain. As you know, a lot of where the beaten wood does, it's sort of where the length of the grain goes down, those cracks that open up when you hit it with a log splitter, once it has a chance, once it gets very weather beaten, those cracks are so easy, particularly with offcuts, that you can just grab hold of it by hand and just snap them open by hand. Uh, and that's one of the things that the shiitakes love is to be able to get in between some of this wood. Um, and you know, as a result, like if they want to get their mycelium slash roots in, that's the the way to do it uh, is to you know be able to get in through. Uh, cracks and, and sometimes they, uh, it's, it's actually nicer for them to open those cracks up and then try and throw a few spores in and then try and close them up again but in that that means it's easier to split because there's not nails going through it so when I go to cut this up I don't have to worry about nails when I go to split it I'm not fighting against nails and the other thing is, the stuff that was actually used in that super dish, some of it's all right and has been reused in that um, hothouse thingy I'm making out, or <laughs> started making out there with the um, cardboard house floor as the base. Um, some of that's been used in that, the good stuff, but the bad stuff, I've actually left it out where it collapsed. <coughs> And in that, it's been painted, but because there's no nails, except for in the ends, I can trim the ends off with a mitre saw or a circular saw or whatever, and then just plane the paint off with my electric planer. Done. And then I'm back to paint and nail-free wood that's partly rotted that I can also inoculate as well. So. I've really been thinking about all this because I know there's so much bloody radiata pine that's just on the verge of going to the pack or is starting to split or is starting to rot or is already just rotted beyond the joke that I've put it in the bonfire. And I thought, we've got to burn all these floorboards as well because they're starting to rot. And I just thought, holy smoke, like, I'm not going to be able to burn these floorboards before this pine rots unless I'm running the wood stove 24-7 just for the purpose of just burning wood. It's just, it's getting beyond the joke. There's so much stuff that is so close to going rotten um, that I can't realistically find a use to burn it all, even if I have a heated glass house that there's just too much to try and get through realistically. Um, and then the penny occurred to me, instead of just burning this partly rotted hardwood, why don't you use it to grow shiitake mushrooms? Because you're not going to be able to burn it anyway, because you've got too much stuff to burn, and it's not good for anything else, and it's going to end up on a bonfire because it's going rotten. What else can I use it for but shiitake mushrooms? And then at least I'm going to get something worthwhile out of it, as opposed to burning it 
when I don't even need to burn it and just almost burning it to the point of burning it. So the hardwood that is on the verge of rotting um, is going to be directed towards that. And there's, there's a few beams out in my big beam stack behind all my um, firewood stacks there uh, where that little area fenced off is with a bit of um, silver beet. Behind that there's a few beams there that I reckon should be plucked out because they're going bad too. Um, and I will trench out an area sometime in the next summer, uh, in the coming summer, to be able to throw all this stuff in. And I might literally go and buy 10 packs, you know, spend about 95 bucks on a heap of these shiitake spores. They're actually grains with the spores sitting on the grain. And go and pour them right through this entire mass of stuff and then cover it over and water the hell out of it as you're supposed to um, to get it started and then after that you just sort of keep it moist. I think you water it first actually and then, but anyway we can water it first, then inoculate it, then put the dirt over, then water it again and then just keep it moist. And I've sort of got to find a spot because you're not supposed to really go into conifer wood with shiitake and a certain other off-gridder has been nudging me quite a bit about the Back to Eden method and theoretically it should all work out here because I've got something which is very similar to potting mix with this great mass of what is it, 89 years now of um, yeah that's right, 89 years worth of cypress droppings out here, the little cypress leaves dropping off Theoretically, that should make a perfect potting mix style thing full of humus. Da -da -da -da. You can't grow a bloody thing in it. It's just hopeless. The water beads off and runs off and won't soak in. I have grown one or two things and I've had to water the bejesus out of them to get them to even survive. And most times, you know, I grew spring onions out there. This is before I was even on YouTube. And they're just. Oh, crap. <laughs> I just couldn't get enough water and so they never grew terribly big and I did plant a bunch of silver beet out there and while this other stuff almost died and I gave up on it it's still going and the stuff that was under here I looked after it and I watered it and I done all the stuff and <laughs> was the end of it I only got it for one year and then I was buggered I grew some Siberian kale as well out there anyways uh, you're not really supposed to have shiitake mushrooms involved in, like, growing in conifer wood. I don't know about conifer leaves, but that's exactly what there's a bloody thick layer of on the ground out there, an 89-year thick layer of conifer leaves on the ground. And henceforth, I don't really know if you sort of want to be having shiitakes in with that. I don't know exactly why if they don't grow or if they're poisonous or what happens um, or if they just don't grow at all but uh, yeah I don't think you're supposed to have the two together having said that you sort of need to keep the area sort of moist so it's got to be damp enough and I've been thinking about all these blooming <coughs> Peruvian peppercorn trees and I reckon fencing off a little area that it doesn't necessarily have to be under the Peruvian peppercorn trees. Um, I'm thinking about that one that's down there. Um, or one of these ones anyway. Don't even know what this is classed as. I could even dump it all in here, which might not be a terribly stupid idea once I move a few rocks. Um, so the conifers, like, they're not near this, so it hasn't really got that all there. It's just actually leafleted directly from this. Uh, but somewhere, somehow, I'm going to find a little wet patch, a little damp, dry patch. Could even be on the other side of this. It might be a terribly stupid idea. And bury all this wood. There's actually not as much as it may sound at the moment until I get into this 4x2 that's beside the um, water tank there and the other stuff I use for the super dish when I get into that there might be quite a bit more um, but yeah 
I'll think about it, we'll work it out, we'll fence it off to keep the sheep from kicking the damn things off. I don't think sheep eat mushrooms, I know cows do, but I don't think sheep do. But then again, I wouldn't necessarily trust these sheep. Um, especially not door knocker. She would eat, eat your damn pants off the clothesline if you had a chance. Um, and at that point I'll fence it off and uh, bury it in the ground and load her all up with spores and see how we go. Uh, getting like I was travels or something. It's flipping lunchtime and I only just got up. Mmm. A certain person wouldn't stop meowing last night at the door. God, I'm mean nuts. Funny, ain't you, puss, hey? You start doing naughty things and then you can't work out why it's not like the old days where you can just uh, keep coming in enemy room as you want. Anyway. We had a decent amount of rain. I only heard one bit of thunder and uh, probably flashed about half a dozen times or something like that. Uh, I was over at the on-grid house at that point. And, um, yeah, well, rainwater system was working pretty hard. <laughs> it's not much different even around the other side, except we don't have plum leaves involved around the other side, so I've got to go and flick that off and I might um, go down the bottom, check the IBC and then turn on the um, rainwater tank inlet to the 60 litre plastic drum on the other side because I say by the shenanigans we had we probably topped that tank up a bit more yet um, I haven't checked how much yeah. Just put my finger over the mic and we'll go look at the gauge. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's about five and three quarter mil. I think six and a quarter is a quarter inch so closing in on a quarter inch there um, that's pretty flaming good you doing big pussy good morning Pat I tell you what he's about double the size of her and probably about four times the weight and he's a heavy cat so he's about full grown now <coughs> yeah one of the uh, other things I didn't mention was um, those things I was talking about with the shiitake <coughs> the old hardwood floorboards um, which there wasn't as many as I thought not all of them but quite a few of them must have been, I think they're just the ones that have come from the edge of a building or just a little patch, like a bit of a hallway or something like that, uh, because there's quite a few of them that have got a lot of staples, and I mean they have just gone AK-47 style on the staples. Um, and <laughs> there's about a staple every two inches, just freaking shitloads of them, and sometimes there's even two rows of them on the one board. Uh, so it's probably been to hold down carpet or something along those lines. Maybe the underlay under the carpet or something, I don't know. Probably didn't even have underlay because of the age of the building it was out of. Um, <coughs> and, you know, wooden floors they don't bother with underlay because it's only really a concrete floor thing usually that they do underlay on. Um, not always, but... But yeah, oh... That was the other thing. Um, <laughs> there's a little runt sheep out there. Walking past me. Rabbit cage there. The other thing was um, that, what's his name? <sighs> you know how to sit in here. It was the black um, wood heater thing for the propagation 
thing I, I went and got the appropriate size bit of pipe and tried to weld it up and had gaps about that big and <laughs> I was trying to bridge the gap with a MIG welder and I had the amps up too high and whoop too many holes in it and one little bit I used to because it's sort of on the side of where it sort of curves around a bit um, slightly dome shaped so to make it fit I had to cut one side off and then I realized the gap I had on the other bit could be used to could be covered up with the off cut basically um, and I blew a lot of holes and things and yeah it's, uh, <laughs> By the time I would get either side to fuse, it was just about ready to collapse, if you know what I mean. You know, it was one of these ones where you needed plenty of amps because it was thick enough. Um, but, you know, it was sort of, you're trying to bridge it and then halfway through you're just about putting holes in it to get it to bridge. So then I just started sort of working on one area and then work on another area and then let it, you know the other area cool as I'm working on the second area then back to the first area then back to the second area then back to the first area and that sort of ended up working alright but she didn't come out terribly clean at all it was not a nice clean welding job it has been probably nine months or so it's basically the last time I welded was when I done those tree guards so it's um, been a little while and uh, you know, this this wasn't two nicely held together pieces side by side. This was one bit that was sort of half going bad that I'd ground most of the rust off trying to bridge across a gap that was oh, just ridiculously big. It was more than one eighth of an inch. It would just damn near look like... <laughs> it wasn't a quarter inch, but it was, you know, it was getting ridiculous. Uh, all the same, and <clears throat> yeah, of course it was all on a curve, so you know you'd be welding the top bit or whatever, and uh, as you get down to the side, then the, it'd be trying to run, sort of thing. So you had to turn it around, and then go on, and you're sort of trying to go between a domed piece and a, and a piece of a pipe, and it's you know you've got to keep moving it around to keep it on the flat and I sort of wasn't moving around as much as I should and the light was oh crap light I could barely see what it was doing um, fluoros above but I had another light which just wasn't doing much at all and oh god it was sort of uh, wasn't really uh, that good but anyway we got it done. Doubtless, I believe it'll probably uh, find a hole in itself once it gets a little bit of use. Um, but that shouldn't matter anyway because around that area probably will have um, a bit of concrete or something like that. I might uh, make sure I put a bit of concrete around it. I've got that muffler putty and I tell you what, that doesn't do anything except just make things worse. As I found out from the wood hot water system, but um, what I do notice, and this probably will be the case with this one, is the old wood stove in here. Um, you guys can't exactly see it, but behind the hot plate, there's a damper that slides in and out to close over the flue. That's the little gap I look through to gauge how much wood's still left inside it. Because if there's flames going up around that part, she's fine. And when there's no flames or just the odd couple of sparks here and there going up through that gap, she's ran out of wood. No smoke ever comes out that hole. Ever. And I have about four foot worth of flue sitting on top of that. And it never blows smoke out that hole, it only just, well I assume it sucks a little bit of air in, but I can tell you one thing, it definitely doesn't blow smoke out. And 
I can see through it, even though it's open, no smoke comes out of it. And because this exact weld is in about the same flame and position, even when some of these little spits and spats that didn't sort of quite... I got it to flow together in the end, I got both sides to stick in the end, but it was... <laughs> some areas it sort of mightn't be quite like that, and some areas it really wasn't too good, and... And I know there's going to be little holes pop out, is what I'm saying, but those holes, when they do pop out because they're in a similar area to that, they're not going to blow smoke because the gap for damper in that doesn't blow smoke. And uh, it's a bit of a stupid damper because you close that and all you do is smoke the damn room out. But I must admit it doesn't have the original ashtray and doesn't have the damper that was probably attached on the front of that ashtray and back in the day when it was first built, it was probably sealable, you know, really well sealable. And, um, yeah, that sort of damper doesn't really work to my mind these days. And I've had nothing but smoke-filled rooms from it, so I just leave it open all the time. And, um, and nothing happens in the way of smoke, so... Hopefully, if any holes appear, that's exactly what will happen with this little wood heater. I have decided I am going to grab the ashtray out of the wood hot water system and use in it. Um, I'm going to try and finish off everything on it. Um, probably go over the welds with a, you know, the wire brush on the cordless drill thingy. Um, <coughs> I've ground back some of the welds to not look so spattery. Um, and, yeah, I'll finish doing all the welding on it and then clean it up with a wide brush and then respray what needs to be resprayed. And, uh, I was going to have legs on it. I don't think that's a very good idea. If there's all these bricks and stuff, I think the bricks and all that, and probably what's going to be one of my bigger glass sheets over the top to act as a glass house, all that needs the framework to hold it. And this might as well just be strapped in to the bottom of all that because I can't realistically expect to carry all that weight through a few bits of steel on the bottom of this um, little 10 pan propane tank. I just, you know, it's, it's going to be too centred. We need to have legs either side of this whole setup, not in the middle because it will just tip over uh, in the wind. So and tip over because it's too heavy on either side with too narrow a, you know, it's, the feet ain't wide enough basically. Anyway, <clears throat> I suppose I get a bit of rolling for the day.